The first tick is quarter percent higher, so 11,396. Market is flat, so there's a 10 point change in the Nifty, 11,351. The market is absolutely flat, uh, 11,337, uh, four point change down. The bank Nifty is already back about 29,000 and is surging. On the mid cap screen, mixed trends coming in. Uh, the index has managed a little bit of greens. Absolutely nothing on the markets today, flat close, but uh, you know, managed to extend the winning streak to four days in a row. I mean, the cumulative gains over the last two days are upon the Nifty at least have been about 40, 45 points. The Nifty ends above 11,300, while the Sensex rises above the 37,700 mark. Real estate, pharmaceutical stocks lend support, IT index sulks. Nifty Bank leads the charge, ending at a record close. Yes Bank and Indusind Bank top the charts, while ICICI Bank drags. Z promoters look to sell stake in Z Entertainment to Sony. CNBC TV18 learns that the deal is likely to be announced in a month or two. DHFL gains 3% on reports the company has received investor interest for its education financial arm. Jubilant Foodworks also ends in the green after a block deal of 40 lakh equity shares. Lupin ends flat after the company's Madhya Pradesh facility comes under the US FDA scanner. Tata Motors sulks after JLR recalls 44,000 cars due to excessive CO2 emissions. Well, those were the top five headlines from Dalal Street today. Hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of Markets Today Talk Back. This is the show where we tell you all of the action which happened in Dalal Street today. We tell you the top stories and of course we take questions as well. I'm Prashant Nair. With me today, my colleague Surabhi Upadhyay. Hi, Surabhi. Hi, Prashant. Well, finally a pause coming in. Maybe yeah. the Bulls can't complain. They've had one hell of a party last couple of sessions. Well, over the next 30 minutes, we are going to be discussing a lot of these trends. We'll also talk about those top five headlines that you just heard out there in the uh, flyers and our guests are going to be answering your stock specific questions as well. Joining in to do all of this today, Prakash Divan and technical expert Mitesh Thakkar. Uh, good evening to both of you gentlemen. Before we get started, let's quickly rewind the day on the index, uh, Prashant, as you said, absolutely nothing. More yes. about individual stocks, really. Absolutely. So I think I should <laughs> toss right back to you. <laughs> but, you know, nothing really, right? Uh, so the Nifty did nothing, uh, was flat, and uh, the mid-cap and small-cap indices were also absolutely flat. Market breadth was little negative declines, outnumbered advances. I mean, actually, even oh, if you look, go back and uh, look at how we started in the environment for global markets back then, I mean, for Asia, for example, it was uh, really not a one-way move up or down. It was largely mixed. Some markets were down, some were up. So it wasn't a conclusive kind of a day for global markets even. Uh, you know, banks continue to do well. I mean, I think that part of the market is uh, running strong. And what kind of banks? Banks which are essentially away from their respective highs. I mean, there are two names which come to mind. I'm talking about Indescent Bank, which is still, I think, about, what, 15, 20% away from its high? Uh, and Yes Bank, which is 50, 60% away from its high. Whereas all the other private sector banks, at least the ones that get talked about uh, as uh, the uh, the top-tier the top uh, banking plays, they're all at uh, uh, pretty much uh, their 52-week uh, highs. So, I mean, the action in, in both these names, Indusind and Yes, and Indusind more so, uh, is uh, continuing and it uh, propelled the Nifty Bank and the Nifty Private Bank Index higher. Uh, as I said earlier, markets in Asia were mixed. China, there was some data which was largely in line, nothing encouraging, but it, it kind of did not have any significant uh, impact as far as price action is concerned. And of course, I mean, there is this Brexit. Uh, pretty much every day of this week, we've got a vote. Uh, and uh, we've got to vote once again on Thursday, uh, which is going to happen later, with the decision of which we will know when we, once we come back on a Friday morning. But basically, all eyes on that particular development as well. Uh, otherwise, essentially just consolidation here after days and weeks of uh, pretty relentless rally. In terms of stocks, uh, as you said, Surabhi, it's all about uh, specific names. Absolutely. And very mixed trends coming in here as well. So quickly to run through first the large cap screen. Today was a good day for some of the smaller private sector banks. And uh, the examples would be Indescent Bank. Yes Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, all of these banks were up and about and an interesting breakout on Indusind today reported. Other gainers included NTPC, Coal India and Gale. Gale had a nice surge in the last one hour of trade, ended at the highs of the day. Uh, what were the heavyweights doing? Well, they were sitting out of the party, which is why you got a flat close today. And the examples are on your screen. HDFC Bank, Infosys, SBI, flat to mildly negative, uh, throw in a TCS as well. So these stocks were choosing to be on the downside today. Uh, other losers included Power Grid, uh, HCL Tech. Hero Moto, even Tata Motors for that matter, more bad news coming in, reports of certain recalls uh, on JLR. Uh, that stock was also down in negative territory. Let's move to mid-caps now. 
Uh, again, we're talking profit taking. So whatever has gone up very sharply in the last two or three weeks, that's where the gains were coming off today. Stocks like Voltas, Havels, Motherson Sumi, Bharat Forge, Sriram Transport Finance. And anyway, these are not deep cuts, just some money being taken off the table. The ADAG pack was weak once again. So the whole pocket, uh, Reliance Capital, Power Infra uh, on your screens, down between 5 and 8%. But there were some gainers. It's not as if everything was bleak in the mid-cap arena. Some interesting buying on NBCC, DLF, uh, Spencer's retail 10% up. And logistics stocks, maybe we can just pull up a gati for you or an all cargo. Now, I don't know whether this was a one-day wonder move, flash in the pan moves, or whether something is building on logistics. But these were two stocks uh, from the broader market, which uh, cut the eye as well, particularly in the afternoon session. So on that note, Prashant, we get started with the guests. Yeah, I mean, let's just uh, set it up in terms of what uh, it looks like as far as the market itself goes. Mitesh is uh, with us, Prakash is with us as well. Mitesh, uh, a quick word on the Nifty and uh, how we are set up. Any trades here? I think, Prashant, I think, uh, you know, number of days of up move, I think we've got a flat move in the sense that uh, we've got some selling coming in from higher levels. And given the fact that we're quite overbought, I think this is not the best time to initiate a trade. Uh, we've rallied from, let's say, 10,800 on the 1st of March to about 11,348 or 550, 560 point kind of a gain on closing basis. And I think time to give up about 100 odd points. So I think I would wait it out, uh, try to play it uh, long, but uh, on a decline around 11,250-230 remains the preferred buying zone and 11,180 should be your stop loss on the downside. Okay. All right. Let's move to then the next headline on the show today. The Nifty Bank was leading the charge today, ending at a record close. And it is because of these smaller private sector banks that we saw an interest. Yes Bank and Innocent Bank were the ones that were topping the charts. But as we told you, it was ICICI Bank that, again, was part of the uh, big boys club that was looking at some declines today. So ICICI Bank was pulling on the lower side. We do have some queries coming in. Ravi Prakash from Uttar Pradesh has written in. His question is on Yes Bank. Now, he has been holding 141 shares of the bank. Wow, at a price of 372, he's a long-term investor and wants to know what he should do next. Now, this is an interesting one. Prakash, it's an example of how many people got trapped on the wrong side in Yes Bank, right? And yeah. I mean, it's great that it's at least gotten back to 250, but his price is still far away. Yeah, I think so what he, should be done? He, he seems to be the one uh, who suffered the most uh, before, you know, the fall, precipitous mm. fall uh, uh, triggered off. Uh, now, the options that he's looking for are out of whether he should uh, hold or sell. It's not add or average or something. So I'm not going on that, but that's what I would otherwise recommend. Yeah. Uh, one of the clear indications is that the stock could come back to the 300 plus zones quite uh, quickly. But from 300 to 372, we'll need a little bit of a, a real move in terms of a real changes in terms of the, the underlying operational business. Uh, this move from 250 to 300 could also be predicated by a little bit of a slip back to 210, 215, 220 kind of zones for the simple reason March end numbers is a significant milestone that the 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 bank needs to overcome in terms of any more kitchen sinking attempts and once that is done with it's more of a time uh, issue uh, then you know that march to 300 is definitely very imminent so stay put i don't think uh, there's any point in uh, uh, losing money by booking out while you waited and and seen the entire fall all the way to 145 150 and the move back uh, mitesh uh, you want to come in on this one so I think, uh, you know, uh, while uh, Prakash has kind of avoided the ad mode, I think uh, it still remains a good option to get your price down. Uh, I think we've seen 150, 170 now should be the low of it. So any declines to 200, 210, if you get it, I think should be added so that the average price comes down. And uh, my sense is around 280 is, is 280, 285 is where some of the long-term averages kind of start kicking in. It'll be tough for the stock to get past this 280, 290 zone. So try to, you know, in case you get it down at average, average down, I think try to get it, uh, get out around 280, 290 zones. Uh, you know, since we're on the topic of banks and private banks, Prakash, indecent, any thoughts on what's happening last three days? Oh, yeah. So, you know, very clearly uh, there was an expectation that MFIs uh, are not in the best of uh, health and there was a feeling that, you know, RBL and indecent, there were some blocks that were uh, available and then there would be some sort of a overhang in terms of the supply coming in, which hasn't happened. So all all banks uh, have rallied and Indusind uh, would have to participate in that as well. So it was like a given. We spoke about this on Monday as well, uh, uh, where very clearly there was this build-up, but uh, there was this hesitation that we got over, I think, by Tuesday things were out. 
and it still could rally uh, all the way to about 1800 zones, uh, Prashant. So that's where its uh, price to book also becomes uh, very close to its historic averages. There's no reason why it should lag uh, all the other peers. Okay, that's a word on Indusin Bank. Let's move on now to the next headline, the third one for the day. News from Deal Street. Z promoters are in talks with Sony to sell a part of their or their entire stake in Z Entertainment to Sony. In fact, people in the know have told us that the deal is likely to be announced either later this month or perhaps in April. Nisha has more details on this one. So let's get this going. Nisha, what are the details you're picking up? That's right. We had first reported earlier that uh, Sony is uh, looking at Z Entertainment. In fact, uh, sources with direct knowledge share with us that this particular negotiation between uh, SL Group as well as uh, Sony is, an, it, uh, is at an advanced stage at the moment. What we do gather is that over 500 rupees per share is the kind of ask price for SL Group promoters for selling a substantial say, stake in Z Entertainment. Those negotiations are going on of whether or not it will be a partial or a controlled stake sale. So yes, last lap by March or April, uh, this particular transaction should see the light of the day. Nisha, thanks uh, for that. So still some time away. I mean, uh, the, any transaction being completed. We've got a question. Vivek uh, Tolia from Mumbai has uh, uh, Z shares. He's been holding 320 uh, Z shares at uh, his cost is 475 rupees per share. Wants to know whether he should hold or sell. Uh, Prakash, first, uh, your thoughts? What I think, do? given the new slow uh, at these levels that he's acquired, this, it doesn't really make sense to exit. So, uh, wait for the uh, final full blown value unlocking as it's seemingly uh, building in. Mm. Uh, my only concern is it. You know, what Nisha mentioned was it could be a couple of months away. So, uh, is it worth rejoicing right now? Uh, and, and, and you know, it, the price is still tentative, 500 plus. So, we're just about 10% short of that. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong also in between. So, if it moves to that 475 uh, kind of a zone which uh, the gentleman is bought at, I think you should, uh, you know, cut his losses or at least, you know, uh, get into a neutral territory and not, uh, and then probably trail the, uh, you know, stop loss. Uh, so to speak. But uh, fundamentally, I think it's done so well uh, in terms of the price volume action. Uh, you really can't uh, expect it to kind of keep on yeah. surprising you beyond this at the same rapid pace. It's absolutely been breathtaking, the rally from the lows in this stock and all in anticipation of the stake sale, which we still don't have any clear sign of. Mitesh, uh, do you think there's more steam in this rally? It's all about the price action on this stock. News is still elusive. That's right. I think, uh, you know, there's no confirmed news, but of course there's pending news coming in. Uh, the stock corrected to sub 300 bounce back. I think around 500 is where the stock will face a lot of supply. So I would agree with Prakash. Close it about 475, 500 zone. Try to exit. That will be very close to your price as well. We'll not lose much time to get into something else which is showing signs of long-term trends. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, stay with us. Uh, time for our first break on the show. So let's do that. Uh, but uh, here's some market opinion that we got from... Uh, uh, experts through the course of the day. Uh, listen in. We are back in the JFP with more. I'd like to buy India, but I really want to wait and see what happens when we get the election results in May because um, from what I can tell, the polls uh, put the BJP at about 280 seats, which is just barely enough they could form a majority. And, and that, I think, is the most important thing because if they can get a majority, I'm pretty sure that the market will continue to rally after the election. Generally, there is a feeling still that China will be the better performer this year, if for no other reason than um, the trade talks look like they're moving in the right direction. Uh, China's much cheaper than India. India's on about 17 times. China's on around uh, 12 times. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think that most people still would prefer China of the two major markets here in Asia. I think there's room for a further rally if there's a positive surprise on the deal. What's the positive surprise? It's they drop the existing tariffs. That would then allow the market to think that maybe uh, globalization hasn't ended after all. Then we get a further rally. Then monetary tightening expectations will come back into the market and that would be the end of the rally. If, on the other hand, you believe the trade deal is going to happen but they won't drop the existing tariffs, then I think the market's just about discounted it. If I'm completely wrong, there's no trade deal, uh, tariffs go back up, then we go back in the markets to where we were on Christmas Eve. Rallies and dips are all part and parcel of this 
journey. I think what has happened, the most important of all is that I think a fortnight back, there were two concerns. One is what happens post May in the sense, do we get a stable, strong government or is it going to be one more kind of a, a coalition? Uh, so there were some kind of concerns on the political front. And then, of course, the other concern was on the geopolitical front that will this escalate further? Uh, thankfully, it has not. Uh, so I clearly think that both these apprehensions have been put to rest. And then, of course, third of course aspect is that globally there's been a rally. I think April, May will be very critical. Of course, yes, the election outcome is going to be important. But I think along with that, uh, is there now a renewed confidence in corporate India that earnings can get into the double-digit zone or not? And I think that's going to be very, very important. Back, Prakash Devan and technical expert Mithi Shakar are with us to decode the day's action and also answer your stock questions. Well, we've done now uh, with three headlines. Let's move on to the fourth one. Stocks in focus today included DHFL. This one was actually up 3% on reports of receiving interest from investors for its education finance arm Avance. Reports suggest that uh, Kidara Capital and Warburg Pincus have emerged as the highest bidders. The investors have offered to buy 80% in Avance for more than 1,000 crore rupees. This, of course, is uh, all uh, sort of reports right now. The company hasn't confirmed this. Uh, let's move on then. Auto stocks also sulked in trade today after FADA stated that passenger vehicle inventories account for up to 60 days, twice than what was recorded in January this year. While two-wheeler inventories have reached an alarming level of 90 days from 55 days a month prior. We've got a question uh, coming in. Uh, Sunny B from Mumbai has uh, written in with a question on DHFL first. He's been holding uh, 100 shares of the stock. His cost is 545 rupees a share. He wants to know if he should hold or sell. Mitesh, uh, your advice. In the way the stock has fallen and the way the charts have been damaged, I don't think there's much of a reversal happening, at least for the next foreseeable future, which is about four to five to six quarters. My advice is to exit. Okay. Uh, Prakash is here. Prakash, uh, autos. I mean, stocks were down today. Yeah. The so I think. High. Yeah. The, the 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 pressure has been building up for a while, uh, particularly on the on the back of the fact that the sales numbers haven't uh, been so encouraging. While the stocks have really rallied, if you look at a Hero Motor Corp or Bajaj Auto touching three thousand. So uh, I think auto stocks will go through a little bit of a consolidation. Particularly, I think there's oversupply on the two wheeler side. Uh, the only trigger of hope, the only sliver of hope is is the fact that pre-election is always a little bit of buying for two-wheelers. Except for Aisha, I don't think uh, there's been any major pullback on the way up. Uh, so, uh, Hero Moto and Bajaj look a bit weak. So, if people are sitting on some profits, especially trading profits, they should book out. Long-term investors really don't but need to work. pre-election is now, March. So, uh, whatever so this is has the time. to, uh, yeah, but the election it's... boost has to come in this month, right? Yeah, so that's the only hope. Otherwise, the sales number, the inventory stock up is more of a, uh, a delay in the festive season. So, it's been piling up for the last four months. Mm. It's not something which has just happened. And because of the front loading of insurance costs, fuel prices being slightly higher, NBFCs being slow, sure. a lot of combination. But, uh, uh, you know, you could book some trading profit because this could go on for another month before there are good times to roll in again. Okay, so caution on auto stocks being advised by Prakash. Let's move on. Another stock in news today was Jubilant Food Works. It ended positive uh, this after a big block deal. 40 lakh equity shares changed hands. That's about 3% of the company's equity. And the belief is that promoters have sold some equity in today's transaction. Mangla Malu has all the details. Well, Jubilant Foodworks was in focus today as the promoter sold 40 lakh shares or 3% equity in a block trade at just above 1300 rupees a piece. Initially, the stock reacted higher because that 1312 rupee value at which the deal was done was much higher than what the street was working with yesterday. Yesterday, the street believed that the floor price of this deal was close around that 1276 rupees mark, which was a 4% discount to the previous close. However, long term watchers of the stock would know that over uh, the last many years, the promoters have reduced their stake in the company periodically. So every two years, the stake has come off, be it September 2010, where the stake was close to about 61.4% to now, where it would stand close to around that 42% mark. Would be very interesting to see how the street watches this as a, an overhang gone given the pressure of supply has come away, or this, uh, this will be viewed as something which is a structural negative and going forward, it would, uh, uh, it would invoke the analysts to perhaps reduce the valuation multiple on the stock in which otherwise is a strong uh, structural business in terms of uh, the business performance of Jubilant Foodworks. That is something that only time will tell, but as of now, the promoters have sold in the stock. 
Okay, we've got a question. T.S. Karthik has tweeted to us with a, a query on Jubilant Foodworks. He wants an outlook on the stock and also wants to know if it is the right time to invest uh, into the company. Uh, Prakash? I don't think so. I think it's a bit overvalued and, and all this... Uh, Chinese uh, food, not for yeah, it's it, So, it's early days for it to kind of, you know, uh, start impacting the company and, and uh, replicating this is going to be slightly different than replicating the Domino's and Dunkin' Donuts uh, franchise. Uh, of course, they have some advantages their way, so I'm not doubting that they won't be able to do it, but it's a matter of execution and it's always... Uh, uh, worth waiting for it to kind of give you the first hope of uh, the first indications of uh, positive resonance. Uh, this space is getting exciting. Uh, you, you could look at uh, Westlife Development. That's done tremendously well. It's an unsung hero of sorts, the McDonald franchise for the South and the West. Uh, everything looks going well for them, whether it's the breakfast menu, whether it's McCafe uh, introduction. Uh, real estate is benign. Uh, they've been able to you know manage uh, single store sales growth very distinctly so uh, of course the stock has rallied in the last couple of days so uh, you know you've got to understand the fact that this could seem a bit rich right now but on a bad day uh, closer to 400 bucks it's definitely a better buy than jubilant at 1350. okay so you have an alternative there um, let's move on then to the last headline of the day uh, and staying with some news coming in on auto stocks, Tata Motors sulked around after JLR recalled 44,000 cars due to excessive carbon dioxide emissions. Ten models of the luxury car manufacturer may be emitting more carbon dioxide than certified. The stock ended down almost 1%. Um, uh, Mitesh, uh, let me just quickly get to you on first of all levels. I mean, uh, it's stalling again, Tata Motors, the rally at around 180-odd. Oh, I think... Uh... This time it was looking like it might be able to get past those 190, 195 zones, but we've kind of come back from there. Uh, 177 is an area where short-term averages converge, and we've just had a low today of 177.5. I think if we break that, then we are retesting 165, 166 zones to begin with maybe lower levels. But I think I would just wait it out. Maybe tomorrow if we see some more follow-through, then I think I'll be negative. Uh, or take a short trade on the stock here. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, another stock, uh, Lupin, ended flat after the company's... Uh, facility in Madhya Pradesh. The Mandi Deep facility came under the US FTA scanner. The regulators issued 22 observations to the plant. Uh, let's quickly get the details from Ekta and how significant is the plant and the observations uh, for the business at Lupin. Well, yes, Lupin is a stock in focus in today's trading session. This is because of the Mandi Deep facility receiving an official action indicated status from the US FDA, which simply implies that there is a higher chance of that particular facility getting a warning letter from the US FDA. The financial impact is not expected to be much simply because it's an old unit. They do not have any new filings from the particular facility and sales are less than $100 million from this particular plant. However, the risk does come from the fact that this would be the if in case it does escalate to a warning letter it would be the third warning letter that the company is one of the company's facilities has received remember the goa plant as well as pitampur unit 2 had received a warning letter in november of 2017 currently in process of remediation and being resolved got reinspected recently so this would if in case it does escalate escalate Mandi Deep would be the third plan to get a warning letter and hence that would be the big negative for lupin but separately financial impact limited Ekta, thank you uh, very much for that. That is uh, Lupin in focus. Uh, Prakash, Mitesh, thank you very much for joining us here on this edition of Market Today Talk Back. Absolutely flat day. Uh, fingers crossed for when we come back tomorrow. It's a wrap from Surabhi, me, everyone on the team. Thank you very much for staying with us. More coming up on the other side.